Welcome to my course on Genome Editing and Engineering. We are discussing about personalized therapy and we will continue our discussion on the history and basics of uh, personalized therapy. Uh, let us start with engineering precision uh, medicine. The possibility of precision medicine where medicines may be recommended based on an individual's genetic background has been made possible by advancements in genome sequencing and analytics about which we discussed uh, in the earlier part. Uh, for instance, the genomic mapping of cancer has shown a large number of genes that influence how well a medicine works therapeutically in certain individuals. Engineering uh, biosensors uh, for diagnosis and health status monitoring, controlled release of drugs by creating smart formulations, controlling immune cells for targeted cancer therapy, differentiating pluripotent stem cells into desired lineages creating bioscaffles that support cell growth or creating organs on chips that can screen for disease are just a few uh, opportunities for engineers to contribute to precision medicine through materials and cell engineering. So, precision medicine is a very vast field and, and it requires expertise in so many different kind of domains that we just discussed. Precision medicine will be transformed into a more individualized and efficient healthcare strategy through collective engineering efforts and uh, as discussed in the earlier slides, uh, it is a multidisciplinary uh, subject and there is a lot of scope for people from various uh, disciplines, uh, whether uh, it is in the sequencing and bioinformatics domain or the stem cell culture or uh, uh, cell uh, culture uh, domain and then the preparation of uh, 3D scaffolds or nanostructures for uh, drug delivery and then developing a multi organ on chips for continuous uh, monitoring and then emerging technologies like uh, 3D printing is also finding a uh, huge uh, potential uh, in this uh, precision medicine not to speak of uh, electronics uh, where uh, wearable devices and point of care devices are uh, contributing uh, largely uh, to the development of the uh, domain. The human immune system protects the body against external infections and eliminates endogenously damaged cells uh, to keep it healthy. In the last several decades, vaccination has become a common kind of healthcare, continuing sensory long attempts to harness immune systems for uh, human health. So, precision immunization is one of the important uh, area of uh, precision uh, medicine and this is uh, being you know, desired to be obtained through the engineering of cells uh, for uh, precision medicine. Recent developments in cancer immunotherapy such as the identification of immunological checkpoints and the development of chimeric antigen receptor CART cells have renewed the interest in oncology. A further method for adjusting precision medicine is through immunological treatments that use the immune systems of patients such as phenotypically activating or genetically modifying autologous uh, immune cells. In our earlier lectures, we have discussed in length about the uh, CART cells as well as the uh, application of uh, immunological treatments in cancer as well as in certain some of other, other diseases. One of the most significant revolutions in human health history has been uh, the development of vaccines. In order to be time and budget effective, vaccination programs have targeted entire groups like newborns or elderly patients. These generic populations are diverse in terms of thinking, uh, things like socioeconomic level, ethnicity and health. According to current population wide methods, there have been disparities in the safety and efficacy profiles of several vaccines. Vaccinations may be delivered more precisely in terms of specific populations formulations, regimens and dose levels as the idea of precision medicine has gained attention in recent years. Stem cell engineering for precision regenerative medicine. Regenerative medicine is one of the uh, new areas, emerging areas uh, and in this uh, uh, domain precision uh, therapy or precision medicine uh, is uh, finding uh, a lot of uh, relevance and prominence. Human uh, pluripotent stem cells uh, develop uh, practically into any desired cell types in vitro and can self replicate indefinitely and we have discussed about the stem cell therapy in our earlier lectures. 
Uh, induced pluripotent stem cells about which also we have discussed at length uh, are employed as an alternative to embryonic stem cells since they are less expensive and ethically accessible. IPSC can provide cell replacement regeneration treatments and offer an easier source of stem cells for regenerative medicines. Stem cell based precision medicine uh, could be attained through the uh, following uh, scenarios. Uh, number one, healthy cells from patients with failed organs could be reprogrammed into iPSCs and the iPSCs redifferentiated into uh, desired cell types uh, to finally generate uh, the failed organ. iPSCs with the patient derived genetic defects like monogenic disorders can be genetically corrected by gene editing technologies uh, upon on which this particular course is focused on. The engineered stem cells could then be used as the source for growing healthy cells for cell replacement or repair therapy. IPSCs with patient specific genotypes can be directly differentiated into the disease associated cell types for disease modeling. This application can be useful in cases where the cause of the disease is unclear and direct screening for an effective therapy uh, uh, in case it is not possible. This uh, picture shows uh, some of the stem cell engineering applications in uh, precision uh, regenerative uh, medicine. So, uh, we have uh, the uh, patients here. So, we take the skin, liver or biopsy or the blood collection and we do the reprogramming and then induce uh, IPSCs and then uh, we may uh, go for differentiation of these IPSCs into various desired uh, cell types and then uh, we use them uh, for uh, drug screening and uh, pathogenesis uh, research and then we re-inject uh, these uh, desired cell types back to the uh, patient. Uh, this is one arm of the uh, application. In the other arm, we uh, go for uh, genome editing or gene editing of the um, IPSCs. So, uh, to obtain repaired IPSCs and these IPSCs are then again used uh, for differentiation into different uh, desired uh, cell types and they have uh, the uh, gene edited uh, genotype and these are again uh, put back uh, into the patient to cure the disease. So, this is in a uh, simple uh, way uh, the application of stem cell engineering for precision uh, regenerative uh, medicine. In this figure, we can see that uh, jing finger nucleases are used uh, to create uh, isogenic pairs of wild type and mutant induced pluripotent stem cells in order to repair a target sequence. Uh, when the DNA binding and, and DNA cleaving domains are combined, a highly specific pair of genomic scissors is produced that binds to the zinc finger nucleases with specificity of 24 to 36 base pairs and cleaves the DNA of the induced pluripotent stem cells. The DNA uh, breakage point of IPSCs can be repaired homologously using normal donor DNA. Gene editor IPSCs have the ability to develop into specific cell types such as the uh, cardiomyositis, uh, neurons or hepatocytes. Uh, etc. Uh, advances in uh, biomaterials research uh, is also helping uh, the development of precision medicine. Uh, the delivery uh, of the precision medicine is a very, very important step uh, in, in uh, uh, the efficacy of uh, precision or personalized medicine. Uh, uh, biomaterial research are, uh, has enabled us to create uh, 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 new product designs to target and cure diverse ailments uh, which may be required to meet the rising needs of uh, the precision medicine. Uh, precision biomaterials are engineered with specific mechanical and biochemical features to enable the uh, design of personalized implants or organ uh, replacements. Precision biomaterials must be designed to perform a variety of unit operations such as separators which can specifically attach to molecules or cells for separation sensors which can detect particular analytes or electrochemical signals, responders which can change their morphological features or degrade and controllers which can change the materials properties to release the uh, payload. In addition to supporting the growth of artificial tissues, biomaterials can be specifically designed for direct in vivo tissue uh, manipulations. Uh, biomaterials could also help in enhancing the efficacy of precision medicine through the engineering of smart drug delivery systems. Uh, through pharmacokinetics, drug delivery systems may foster the accuracy of 
uh, precision uh, medicine. And uh, these are some of the potential applications in cardiac tissue engineering, corneal tissue engineering, cartilage tissue engineering, bone tissue engineering, skin tissue engineering uh, as well as uh, drug uh, delivery systems. Engineering smart biomaterials for drug delivery systems that can detect the demands of a person's physiological condition and change their drug release profiles accordingly is an appealing method for creating precision uh, pharmacokinetics. So, then uh, conventional uh, drug delivery systems uh, just release the drugs uh, as, uh, as a burst uh, immediately after uh, delivery. But these smart biomaterials uh, do not do so. Uh, they will release the drug only as per the need of the uh, patient, although uh, uh, in spite of it being already delivered uh, into the uh, patient's uh, targeted uh, locations. So, uh, in this way, the efficacy of uh, precision uh, medicine uh, is uh, thought to be enhanced. By combining nano carriers with gene treatments such as plasmid DNA, mRNA or miRNA, the formulation of the nanomaterial may be customized to match its patient's unique needs based on their unique uh, genetics. The closed loop drug delivery systems monitor the level of a uh, physiological signal such as the concentration of a molecule and control the release as per the patient's requirements. They can work as precise dosing devices. For example, Gu and colleagues developed a closed loop system that employs integrated sensors to monitor blood sugar levels and trigger the release of insulin from pre-stocked uh, depots. These can uh, also be applied to other diseases that need real-time uh, drug dose uh, management and uh, thereby helps in reducing the toxicity uh, of the drugs. Smart polymers are one type of soft materials that respond to environmental changes. The thermally sensitive polymers which are frequently employed as cell carriers and in 3D printing are some of the examples. Cell filling polymers are uh, other type of uh, smart polymers that can repair their structures after repeated injury and are frequently injectable by needles. Another type of material with the capacity to remember its original shape is shape memory uh, polymers. These smart polymers can transport proteins, drugs and cells. They can be used in precision medicine, uh, minimally invasive surgery and bioprinting thanks to their injectability and SIP memory capabilities. These are some of the uh, smart polymers for cell therapy and uh, precision medicine. Uh, if you can uh, look into this uh, figure, uh, uh, they are being used uh, in uh, drug delivery, then uh, 3D bioprinting, cell and gene therapy. And uh, some of the materials which are used to do this are uh, they respond to various uh, stimuli inside the body and uh, they also have safe memory and also some of them are having the property of self healing as we have discussed in the uh, earlier slide. So, uh, these materials uh, are being used to package either drugs or genes or uh, stem cells and deliver them uh, into uh, the patient and uh, thereby the precision medicine or therapy efficacy is increased. So, uh, through this uh, diagrammatic uh, explanation, you know, we can understand the importance of smart polymers for the cell therapy and uh, precision medicine in brief. The temporal uh, perspective concerns the balance between the treatment time of the patient and the degradation time of the smart polymeric uh, materials. From the personal perspective, the smart polymeric materials should be capable of carrying patient stem cells or genes for cell and gene therapy. From the spatial perspective, the materials should respond to particular stimuli and, and, and release drugs at uh, different uh, designed locations or uh, desired locations. Smart polymers can be used to create scaffolds or stands that can accommodate various cell types for cell therapy by having tailorable mechanical strength, precise geometries and environmental reactivity. Smart polymers with stimuli responsiveness can be created as trigger release carriers for proteins, drugs and cells. One fabrication technique to reduce the gap between materials and cell treatments is additive uh, manufacturing. The devices designed to be used for medical reasons are known as uh, medical devices. Scaffolds have been extensively researched among them for decades. Uh, fabricating scaffolds is mostly done to repair 
or replicate damaged tissue or organs of extracellular matrix. Heart valves, the brain, the retina, the tracheal tissue and the skin etc. have been highly successful uh, uh, in this regard in the recent years. Other common medical devices for precision medicine include uh, carriers for cells, drugs and uh, proteins. Let us look into the applications of smart polymers uh, in precision medicine. Uh, these materials uh, can be customized and designed in combination with stem cells and bio bioprinting. And the strategy of 3D bioprinting integrates smart materials and the stem cells to control cell proliferation or and differentiation. In this figure, we can see the bioprinting process uh, where use of smart materials in conjunction with stem cells for therapeutic applications uh, is being done. So, the cells are isolated and then uh, they are converted uh, into stem cells by uh, in uh, the process of uh, uh, induced pluripotent stem cell development and they are allowed to proliferate. Upon uh, proliferation, they are uh, encapsulated in smart materials and then uh, these are subjected to bioprinting and then finally uh, transplanted inside the uh, patients. Precision biomaterials are described as those created specifically to treat a patient's specific condition. Customized biomaterials may encounter challenges that hinder the process of developing precise biomaterials such as therapeutic applications, disease states, usability cost and regulatory approval. One key problem in local delivery systems is the construction of smart materials that can regulate cellular activity. Lack of biodegradability and biocompatibility might have negative consequences on treatment plans that are specifically suited to the patient. Unwanted inflammation is the biggest concern that prevents the use of the bio biomimetic method in the delivery of precise therapies after the implantation of the created materials uh, in, in patients. Uh, Theranostics. Theranostics uh, is basically a combination of two words, uh, therapeutics and diagnostics. The term theranostics was first used by John uh, van Kozer and it refers to scientific advancement that aims to create more specialized and personalized treatments for a variety of pathological conditions. And these advancements also aim to combine diagnostics and therapeutic applications into single agent resulting in a promising therapeutic paradigm that includes diagnosis, drug delivery and treatment, treatment response uh, monitoring. It provides a uh, diagnostic therapy for specific patients, testing them for potential adverse drug reactions and then customizing a course of action for them depending on the uh, test results. So, uh, in this figure uh, we can see the various uh, applications of uh, theranostics. So, uh, the critical uh, components are the formulation design and then uh, the delivery mechanism and using micro and nano uh, engineering. So, here the, you can see this uh, single uh, entity in which all these uh, functionalities are uh, incorporated and uh, the single entity itself will uh, 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 help us to obtain uh, biomedical uh, images uh, and uh, as well as uh, used as uh, therapeutic agent and uh, they are basically non-invasive and highly sensitive uh, disease early diagnosis and uh, surveillance is possible with such type of agents and some of the important uh, concerns are the nanotoxicology and then environmental nanoparticles and the uh, disease uh, development. Another area is the smart devices in precision medicine. Real time sensing is required to determine the biochemical properties of each individual in order to treat them with precision medicine. Sensing devices that are widely accessible and usable uh, boost patients engagement by enabling them to readily monitor their own health in addition to helping doctors identify diseases with greater accuracy. People may track their health and identify their precise healthcare needs in real time with wearable sensors. Uh, it is extremely desirable to have portable and disposable sensors that can monitor physiological signals. Simple gadgets can quickly monitor a patient's state and offer useful information that may be utilized to evaluate individual patients uh, health more accurately. Another important area is the organs on chips for precision drug screening. Organites have been uh, produced in vitro using biopsies from cancers of the liver, 
uh, gastrointestinal tract, head and neck, pancreas, prostate, etc. One of the most important aspects of correctly anticipating a drug's effectiveness is uh, preserving the heterogeneity of the tumor microenvironment. And we have discussed about the TME in our earlier lectures that includes a diverse varieties of uh, cells. And maintaining this diversity uh, in a uh, organoid uh, is very, very uh, important. A high throughput drug testing platform for precision medicine may be constructed using the organs on a chip technique which combines organoid cultivation and organoid behavior monitoring uh, into one uh, device. Uh, this uh, figure uh, tells us about the health avatar, a virtual depiction of a person that includes all the relevant health data as well as uh, sophisticated management and uh, prognostication tools. The personal health data serve as the focal point of the health avatar which is uh, integrated with organizations involved in uh, healthcare, commercial uh, governance and uh, research. Uh, another area which is uh, uh, becoming very important in the context of uh, precision medicine and uh, big data and uh, uh, other uh, aspects of uh, therapeutics is the digital twin uh, which we are not discussing here but uh, this is just to uh, inform you that the field of precision uh, medicine is in fact uh, advancing very rapidly incorporating all kinds of technological advancements uh, that are uh, emerging. Some of the obstacles posed by big data in precision public health and medicine uh, are uh, uh, discussed in this uh, particular slide. Uh, in order to be uh, precise, uh, medicine must revolve around uh, data, especially in generating, linking and learning from a, a variety of uh, sources. So, precision medicine moves from a genetics centered personalization of treatment onto a dynamic risk assessment and optimization of current and future health uh, status as shown in uh, figure uh, A. Uh, so, where the health records, the metabolomics, the transcriptomics, the uh, medications, uh, genomics and uh, the environmental uh, issues as well as the behavioral and, and social uh, angles are uh, very, very important uh, in the earlier risk prediction and the differential diagnosis uh, uh, which is uh, uh, re uh, relevant to a particular uh, person or a group uh, for uh, arriving at uh, treatment optimization uh, to cure the disease. In figure B you can see disease phenotypes are reclassified uh, on the basis of new system level uh, evidence identifying pathophysiological endotypes associated with common uh, and known uh, phenotypes. Even though electronic health records and integrated data repositories are widely used, people tend to be uh, far from their health information have little possibilities to participate actively in research. Healthcare research and the creation of tailored treatment are slowed down by well known obstacles to connecting and effectively utilizing health information from many websites. Furthermore, diagnostics or therapy optimization tools are not uh, translationally uh, coupled with uh, electronic health record while a doctor can get and transmit test results online. Conventional methods based on data from the uh, typical population are frequently used to uh, make diagnosis. One of the important aspect is the regulatory control on personalized uh, medicine. The Food and Drug Administration has uh, already begun to introduce personalized medicine into its regulatory practices. They created the Voluntary Exploratory Data Submissions Program in 2003 as a repository for genetic information uh, the biopharmaceutical sector was maintaining on its uh, own. Uh, in uh, 2011, the FDA published a number of drafts uh, for guidance that have implications for the regulation of personalized uh, medicine. Uh, in 2013, the FDA highlighted the measures that would need to be taken to combine genetic and biomarker information for clinical uses and drug development uh, in a paper entitled Paving the Way for Personalized Medicine, FDA's Role in a New Era of Medical uh, Product uh, Development. 
Uh, the FDA decided that in order to include personalized medicine into their present regulatory procedures, they would need to build particular regulatory scientific standards, research methodologies, reference materials and other tools. A key challenge for regulating personalized medicine is finding a mechanism to show customized medicine's efficacy in comparison to the present standard of treatment. The new technology must be evaluated for both clinical and financial viability. Another area of uh, importance is the privacy and uh, confidentiality uh, concerns. The protection of the patient's uh, data uh, is uh, arguably the most important problem with the commercialization of personalized uh, medicine. One of the biggest problems uh, is the concern and potential repercussions for patients who as a result of genetic testing are discovered to be resistant or are not responding to existing therapies. This covers the psychological consequences that the findings of genetic testing have on the patients and uh, any uh, kind of leakage of data may also impact the uh, insurability of the patient. Uh, another concern is the right of family members who do not express their agreement given that inheritable genetic hazards and the predispositions exist, it would also be necessary to take into account the effects on certain ethnic groups and the existence of a, a common gene. The patient's agreement to have their data used in genetic testing algorithms, mainly artificial intelligence algorithms is a key problem. Another important factor to consider is the permission of the respective institution for the data to be used. The Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act GINA, was implemented in 2008 in an effort to lessen the concern of people participating in genetic research to ensure the patients that their genetic information will not be abused by employers or uh, insurers. So uh, overall we can see that uh, personalized medicine uh, or precision medicine uh, is a promise uh, of the future and it has also uh, already been uh, used uh, in the current uh, uh, treatment uh, modalities. However, there are various issues uh, like uh, the ones we just discussed uh, concerning the privacy and the protection of the data. So, thank you for your uh, patient hearing. We will continue this uh, personalized medicine uh, lecture in our uh, next uh, class. Mm -hmm.